my name is Christine Alfrecht Heiss. Um, at the time, my name was Maria Christine Alfrecht. And I'm actually listed in the passenger roster as Maria or Marie. I don't know, because they just went by whatever my parents, you know, put down as a first name. Yeah, I'm listed as Miss Maria Alfrecht. And my mother was Mrs. Winifred Alfrecht. I sailed on her twice, the maiden voyage coming back in 1952 from Southampton to New York with my mom. So I was three and a half then. Then I had another chance to sail with my both my parents um, coming back again from Southampton to New York in um, 1959. So I remember a little bit more about that trip. New York City to La Havre, France, and Southampton, England. For those who sailed on her, it will be a day long remembered. My mother, my British-born mother, Winifred, and I sailed to Southampton uh, on the SS America. That's how we went um, in 1952. And of course, the America was the sister ship of the SS United States. And uh, that was in March. And we went to stay with my grandparents. My mother's parents still were living in England in a suburb in, in uh, High Wycombe, which is a suburb of London. My mother was a war bride and she met my dad who was an American GI when he was stationed at the US Army base in High Wycombe, her hometown. And they dated all through the war and hardly saw each other for six years. Um, and then my mom came over to this country in 1947 on the Queen Mary. Um, and married my dad. <laughs> and yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> historic ships involved here. In 1952, my father, I believe it was at Christmas, he offered my mom a choice of, as I remember, it was either a mink coat <laughs> or a trip home to England. <laughs> and so she took the trip <laughs> because she hadn't been home in five years. So she really was desperate when you really wanted to see her parents. So that's how we came to be um, in England. And, and then um, after staying about three and a half months, we came back on from Southampton on what was the return maiden voyage of the SS United States. And it sailed on July 10th. And then, uh, uh, as I said, I was little. I was very little, so I, I don't remember too much about it other than what my mom has imparted to me and what I you know, I do have some sort of shocking memories that I remember I can share with you a couple of those. Um, one was uh, getting my head stuck between the railings while trying to get a better look at the ocean whizzing by. And in those days, of course, we, th there were no such things as child uh, um, protection regulations or anything for uh, crib railings or apparently railings on ships. <laughs> so I managed to get my head in there. And um, I actually recreated this scene and I have some pictures, which I hope I can share with you, um, where I got my head wedged in and then turned it and couldn't get back out and got into a panic. And I believe um, a, a pass another passenger managed to um, free me. And then another memory that it was pretty vivid was um, being tied to the chair in the dining room because it, even though, and my mom, um, I have this letter, which is really what prompted me to contact you about memories because I, I really hadn't read this letter from my mom. She wrote back to her parents when we landed in New York, when we had arrived. And it was written about four days after we landed back in New York. And she was writing back to her parents in England to tell them how the trip was and that we were home safe and all this. She says in the letter, which I will read to you that part, um, that it was really quite smooth sailing for most of the time, but it was moving very quickly, very fast because we were trying to break the record. And so everything was shaking and there was a lot of vibration. And, I, and, I, and there, she does mention some choppiness a little bit. So I think that must have been my memory of being in the dining room and a waiter came and took an entire a great big tablecloth, linen tablecloth and tied me to the chair 
and then proceeded to um, slot really slosh water from I took a, a nice silver water pitcher but sloshed water all over the table which was pretty shocking to a child and that was so that all the glassware and the dishes didn't fly off the table <laughs> as it was moving like this so this is the one that we're in so okay so this is the passenger list and it says Southampton if you can see this Maiden Voyage, Southampton, July 10th, 1952, La Havre, Friday, July 11th, 1952, to New York. And then here we are. And since our last name was A <laughs> in those days, there we are. And it says cabin class. So that's all I know. And of course, it's got the list of the officers. It was Captain Manning. Harry Manning. And, and then there's some other interesting stuff that I, as I was looking through this a little more carefully than I ever had before, and I made some notes about some of the um, interesting things, um, just because it's kind of, it's so surprising and such a, such a, a difference from now, nowadays, but it, there's mention about um, ladies' haircuts and men's haircuts being a dollar and a dollar twenty-five. You know, men's haircut was ninety cents, and a woman's haircut was offered for a dollar twenty-five. But and it's talking about also this is all about ballet service and and having a suit press. Oh, oh sponging and pressing. It says for men's garments, a two or three piece suit you could have cleaned for a dollar twenty-five. Tuxedo shirt, dollar fifty, slacks seventy five cents, and so forth. And leave your shoes out, and they'll be polished. I don't know if they still do that on any of the ships, maybe. But and then um, I thought it was very funny. But the um, it says at one point it says there's a professional photographer on board, and besides offering his photos, he will develop passengers' negatives passengers and make prints for them at a reasonable charge. Can you imagine? I mean, and then there's a warning. It says, warning, professional gamblers are reported as frequently traveling on transatlantic passenger vessels. Passengers are warned to take precautions accordingly. And then there's the last one is um, dictation and typewriter facilities. It says a Remington noiseless typewriter machine model seven with case is available without charge for use of passengers. The purser's office will arrange its delivery to your room upon request. Okay, she says, well, um, we had an excellent crossing. It was lots of fun. And I have never seen the Atlantic so smooth, scarcely a ripple on the water. It was very choppy with a heavy swell for about a day and a half out of La Havre. But that wonderful boat never budged. My mom used to get really seasick, by the way. Um, so this was important to her. <laughs> no roll at all. Whereas I think other boats would have been doing that horrible slow roll. The trip was one big celebration and we had an escort of US destroyers and aircraft for 1000 miles out of New York. Actually, we passed the Ambrose Light Monday afternoon and anchored in the Hudson River until 7 a.m. Tuesday, then proceeded, proceeded up the Hudson with an escort of over 100 small craft and dozens of airplanes. Bands were playing on the pier, and we were able to see Jack, that's my dad, for a while before we tied up at the pier. We docked at 9 a.m., and a couple of minutes after that, Chris and I were off the boat. Yeah, I thought that was the most exciting thing. I, I really, as I said, I just had this stuff kind of together and hadn't really examined the letter until recently. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's really quite a description um, in detail of what it was like. 